Hi everyone, welcome back. So after making my video about Fred on iCarly, I found myself going back and watching a ton of Drake and Josh. Drake and Josh was of course the show that effectively preceded iCarly in the Nickelodeon timeline. It itself being a sort of successor to The Amanda Show, where Drake Bell and Josh Peck were both supporting actors. In fact, for quite a long time there had been this sort of lineage in Nickelodeon shows, where the supporting actor from one show would get the starring role in the next. Like you had Amanda Bynes being in All That and then going on to do The Amanda Show, and then Drake and Josh went on from that to do Drake and Josh, and then Miranda Cosgrove went from Drake and Josh to iCarly, and so on and so on. This probably had a lot to do with the fact that all of these shows were created by Dan Schneider, but we don't really talk about him anymore. Regardless of him as a person, a lot of the shows in his lineage were actually really good, and some of them not so good. But I think Drake and Josh is easily up there as one of the best Nickelodeon shows. I don't know exactly why I decided to watch Drake and Josh instead of iCarly. I think there's probably an element of it being a lot more nostalgic for me than iCarly, because I was a lot younger when it was on TV. And also, I think I probably just prefer it as a show. It might also be that I'm mourning the fact that we're probably never going to get a Drake and Josh reboot like we did with iCarly. Carly for certain reasons. That aside, those shows were both really good and had a ton of great episodes, but I feel like Drake and Josh just has the edge over iCarly, and I think a lot of that has to do with the dynamic that the two main characters have. Drake and Josh are two stepbrothers with two very different personalities that suddenly have to live together, and the show works best when it focuses on that premise and the wider relationship between the two of them. Typically the worst episodes in Drake and Josh are the ones where that relationship is put to the side to chase after some standard sitcom plot point, and the best episodes are the ones where we get the most interaction and the most conflict between the two brothers. Treehouse, Who's Got Game, Blues Brothers, The Gary Grill, there are so many great episodes with so many memorable moments that demonstrate why Drake and Josh was such a great show. And I think there's one episode in particular that to me exemplifies the great character dynamic that Drake and Josh managed to pull off over its four seasons. So today I want to talk about my favourite episode of Drake and Josh, which is season two's The Bet. So after the video diary intro that every episode has, this episode begins with Drake and Josh hanging out in the living room. Now the premise for this episode is that Drake is addicted to eating junk food and Josh is addicted to playing video games. And this show demonstrates that he's addicted to video games in the same way that most shows demonstrate a character playing video games, which is by having him destroy the controller. Seriously Josh, calm down. Also side note on the video diary. Who are they talking to? It's the only time in the show where the characters break the fourth wall and talk to the camera, but they never really explain why. There's this one episode where this other guy shows up partway through and explains that he just plugged in his webcam and there he is. Uh, who is this guy? Who? You! I'm Dave. What are you doing here? I don't know. I just bought a new webcam hooked it up and turned it on. So I guess they're live streaming online? But who's watching this? I'm, I mean, I guess we are, but come on, you know what I mean. Are they big Twitch streamers? Do they have thousands of people tuning in to watch two random guys from San Diego rant about each other? That specific introduction is also the only time I can think of where Drake and Josh acknowledge each other in this intro. So does that mean they've been able to hear each other talking shit about themselves this entire time? Anyway, the initial conflict of this episode starts when their mum asks them to pick up Megan from a friend's house because it's about to start pouring with rain. But Josh is too busy gaming and Drake is distracted by eating junk food, I guess? that they both forget to go. And Megan makes her most terrifying entrance of the entire show. Now I get that the whole point of this episode is that they're both supposed to share the blame for this, but I feel like this one's on Drake. After all, couldn't he have just, I don't know, taken the junk food with him? Josh on the other hand can't exactly unplug his games console. I mean he does have his handheld, but come on. You can't distract a man when he's gaming. But Drake and Josh both get grounded for leaving Megan out in the rain. And while they're upstairs, they start arguing about how Drake's addicted to junk food and Josh is addicted to video games. And they decide to make a bet to see whether Josh can go longer without playing video games than Drake can go without eating junk food. And then Megan draws up a contract for them that says whoever caves must dye their hair pink. Whoever caves. That's a surprise tool that can help us later. But the bet starts and they both immediately struggle. Josh obsesses over anything that has buttons on it. He starts playing a micro wave at one point and Drake breaks out in a rash because of how drastically his diet has changed. A doctor comes over and tells Drake to eat some junk food to make his rash go away, which makes Josh think he's going to win the bet. But just as he's celebrating, Megan shows up with a package that might just change things. It's bad. I mean I guess some of Drake and Josh has aged well, but the rest of it maybe not so much. And what was the name of this? I can't seem to remember. It's a game sphere! Hey! 
end, it's spherical. <laughs> spherical! So Drake and Josh both end up in this sort of standoff as they both desperately try and hold out. Josh starts having video game themed hallucinations, which I guess are a thing, and Drake continues to struggle with his rash. Meanwhile, their parents decide to get in on the bet too, each of them taking a side of one of the boys. The tension keeps building like this throughout the episode until Megan convinces them that they both need to force the other one to cave first. Which brings up the best part of the episode, and maybe the best part of the entire series. Why is it dark in here? <laughs> Josh, what did you do? What do you mean, Drake? First of all, how did Josh, a 17 year old, get his hands on all of that? And how has nobody found out about it until now? I mean, he must have had to get it up those stairs somehow. Don't ask. Just enjoy. <laughs> okay, so he killed someone for it. He definitely killed someone for it. This scene alone is why this is my favourite episode. I just love how ridiculous a set piece this is to have Josh trying to tempt Drake with all of this junk food. Drake tries to fight back by playing the game sphere. It has this crazy startup sequence, but we never actually get to see the game he's playing. Welcome to Game Sphere. Hi. <laughs> Prepare for the ultimate gaming experience. Now let's play some games! I remember when I was younger, I really wanted to see what that game looked like, but considering this was 2004, it probably wasn't so great by modern standards. I've also always wanted to know what the game sphere actually is. It clearly isn't a real console, sorry, hate to break it to you, but it looks fairly well constructed to be a single use TV prop. The wireless controller Drake uses is obviously a Nintendo 64 controller with an antenna attached, and the other controller is kind of difficult to tell, but I think it's a silver and black Duke original Xbox controller. You know, the one that was so massive it would leave a hole in the floor if you dropped it? So I looked it up and apparently the console is actually a boombox called the Boom Ball. So unfortunately it can't play games, but it can play your Weezer CD, so that's something. The tension keeps escalating until both brothers cave at the exact same time and while fighting fall into this giant pool of chocolate milk. And Megan points out to them that because the contract says whoever caves and not whoever caves first, both of them have to dye their hair pink, as well as their parents there's always a catch. Finally, the episode ends with everyone in the family except Megan leaving the house with pink hair. Well, almost everyone. Way to play along, Drake. I think this episode is my favourite mostly for just how elaborate that final set piece is. Drake and Josh as a show manages to find this really good balance between being down to earth and realistic and being completely outlandish and over the top. And I think the climax of this episode with Josh playing Willy Wonka is a really good example of that. A common theme of Nickelodeon and Disney Channel shows is overacting. Characters on these shows Shows, particularly the ones in the Schneiderverse, not the Snyderverse, Schneiderverse, are quite often loud and very pronounced in the way they behave. To be honest, this probably just has something to do with the fact that the kids watching these shows respond quite well to that sort of acting. Couple that with the fact that the child actors on these shows, many of whom are experiencing their first big acting gig, probably find that sort of acting a lot easier than anything more subtle, and you can understand why it's so common. But plenty of these kids shows really miss the mark with that sort of overacting, and it can come off as obnoxious, very in your face or just yelling for the sake of yelling. But I don't think Drake and Josh does that. This episode in particular does a really good job of all the explosiveness you'd expect from a kid show like this without overdoing it. And the tempo is managed throughout the episode so that when it finally reaches all out chaos, it feels warranted. This episode is also really good because it heavily focuses on that dynamic between the two brothers that I mentioned earlier. It takes a lot of time to just have the two characters together. And whether it's pitting them against each other like in this episode or in Who's Got Game, having them work together together like an honor roll, or literally trapping them in a room together like in Treehouse, that premise always makes for the best moments in the show. But that's my brief look at my favourite episode of Drake and Josh and why I think it's so great. There's a lot to say about this show that I haven't explicitly said in this video, and maybe I'll cover it more in the future. But for now, if you've liked the video, please consider subscribing. If there's something you'd like me to cover next, let me know, and I'll see you next time.